Good evening. Instead of giving you actual material by me, I'm going to read you an awesome poem that I read. Now, normally I wouldn't do this, but I've tried roughly 18, 19, maybe 20 times to make a video tonight for roughly the past hour and a bit, and it's not working. So, I thought this poem was amazing because, as you know, I love aesthetic and I love feel, and this poem has such a unique, interesting, and exciting to me as a writer feel because it's like nothing I've ever read before. It's completely different. So, without further ado, this is Seven or Eight Things I Know About Her, slash A Stolen Biography, The Father's Guns. After her father died, they found nine guns in the house, two in his clothing drawers, one under the bed, one in the glove compartment, etc. Her brother took their mother out onto the prairie with a revolver and taught her how to shoot. The bird. For a while in Topeka, parrots were very popular. Her father was given one in lieu of a payment, and kept it with him at all times, because it was the fashion. It swung above him in the law office, and drove back with him in the car at night. At parties, friends would bring their parrots and make them perform what they had been taught. The first line from Twelfth Night, a bit of Italian opera, cowboy songs, or a surprisingly good rendition of Russ Colombo singing Prisoner of Love. Her father's parrot could only imitate the office typewriter, along with the ching at the end of each line. Later, it broke its neck, crashing into a bookcase. The Bread Four miles out of Topeka on the highway, the largest electrical billboard in the state of Kansas. The envy of all Missouri. It advertised bread, and the electrical image of a knife cut slice after slice. These curled off endlessly. Meet you at the bread. See you at the loaf were common phrases. Aroused couples would park under the stars on the open night prairie. Virtue was lost, kissed all over by every boy in Wichita. Poets, the inevitable visiting writers, were taken to see it, and it hummed over the seductions in cars, over the nightmares of girls in bed. Slice after slice fell towards the earth, a feeding of the multitude in this parched land on the way to Dorrance, Kansas. First Criticism She is two weeks old. Her mother takes her for a drive. At the gas station, the mechanic is cleaning the windshield and watches them through the glass. Wiping his hands, he puts his head in the side window and says, Excuse me for saying this, but I know what I'm talking about. That child has a heart condition. Listening in. I overhear her in the bathroom, talking to a bug. I don't want you on me, honey. It's 8 a.m. Self-criticism. For a while, there was something about me that had a dubious quality. Dogs would not take meat out of my hand. The town bully kept handcuffing me to trees. Fantasies. Always one fantasy. To be traveling down the street and a man in a clean white suit, the detail of clean impresses me, leaps into her path holding flowers and sings to her while an invisible orchestra accompanies his solo. All her life she has waited for this and it never happens. Reprise. In 1956, the electric billboard in Kansas caught fire and smoke plumed into a wild sunset. Bread on fire, broken glass, birds flew towards it and above the cars and circled round to watch. And last night, past midnight, her excited phone call. Her hometown is having a marathon to benefit the symphony. She pays four dollars to participate. A tuxedoed gentleman begins the race with a clash of cymbals and she takes off. Along the route, at frequent intervals, are quartets who play for her. When they stop for water, a violinist performs a solo. So here she comes, and there I go, stepping forward in my white suit with a song in my heart. I'll see you later.